This video is going to show you a couple of advanced probability rules, as well as how to set up a Venn diagram. Before we can go any further, we first have to define what the union is. Let's say we're running two different experiments. We'll use the same example that we did last class, rolling a die, and flipping a coin. What we can do is identify an event from each experiment. So we'll let event A be the event that we roll an even number. And we'll let event B be the event that we flip heads. Then the union of two events is the event that occurs whenever either event A or event B or both A and B occur. The union is denoted by either writing A or B out in words, or A followed by the union symbol, which looks like the capital letter U, followed by B. So in this case, the union of these two events would be either rolling an even number, or flipping heads, or both, rolling an even number and flipping heads. You just need at least one of the two events to occur in order for the union to occur. The first rule we're going to define is the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Now, we talked about mutually exclusive events back in the first lecture about probability, and we basically said that two events, A and B, are mutually exclusive if they cannot both occur at the same time. Now, bringing the probability interpretation into this, what this means is that the probability of A and B, the probability of the intersection of the two events, is equal to zero. That's what it means for two events to be mutually exclusive. The addition rule for mutually exclusive events says if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability that either A or B, or both occurs, the probability of the union of the two events, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Seeing the word or in any type of problem tells you that you're likely going to use addition. Before, whenever we saw the word and, that told us we were going to use multiplication. The word or is a giveaway that you're going to use addition in the probability problem. Let's take a look at an example of the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Suppose the probability that you get an A on an exam is 0.3, and the probability that you get a B is 0.35. We want to know what is the probability that you get either an A or a B. Now, just looking at this problem, you can probably figure this out intuitively, but I want to actually run through the addition rule for mutually exclusive events and explain why. It's impossible to get an A and a B simultaneously. The reason behind that? is that getting an A and getting a B are mutually exclusive events. So since these events are mutually exclusive, the probability of their union is going to be the sum of their individual probabilities. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability that you get an A plus the probability that you get a B. This gives you 0.3 plus 0.35, which is 0.65. Now, it would be nice if all of our events were mutually exclusive, so we could just add the individual probabilities together to get our final answer, but the reality is that this often isn't going to be the case. A lot of the times, events overlap so that their individual probabilities can't just be added together to get the final answer. Since these events overlap, and since there are times whenever events can happen at the same time, we want to make sure that we're not counting certain events twice, because if we do, then we're adding more probability to our final answer than we should be. The solution to this problem is the general addition rule. The general addition rule says that if A and B are any two events, they don't have to be mutually exclusive, then the probability that either A or B occurs, the probability of the union, is the sum of their individual probabilities, the marginal probability of A plus the marginal probability of B, minus the probability of the intersection, minus the probability that both A and B occur at the same time. As an example of the general addition rule, let's consider a deck of cards. Suppose you draw one card from a full deck of cards. What is the probability that you draw either a club or a king? Now the problem here is that drawing a club 
and drawing a king are not mutually exclusive events. Drawing the king of clubs satisfies both events. So we want to make sure that whenever we're calculating the final probability that we don't count it twice. Here's how we're going to come up with our solution. The marginal probability of drawing a king is 4 out of 52. We have the king of clubs, king of spades, king of hearts, and the king of diamonds as the four possible cards that satisfy this event. The probability of drawing a club is 13 out of 52. There are 13 clubs in a deck, 2 through 10, then the jack, queen, king, and the ace of clubs. Finally, we have to consider the intersection of the two events. The probability of drawing a king and a club is 1 out of 52. The king of clubs is the only card that satisfies both events. Now what we can do is apply the general addition rule. The probability of drawing either a club or a king can be divided up into the probability of drawing a club plus the probability of drawing a king minus the probability that both events occur at the same time, minus the probability of the intersection of a club and a king. Probability of drawing a club is 13 out of 52. Probability of drawing a king, 4 out of 52. And the probability of the intersection is 1 out of 52. So, taking the sum of your marginal probabilities and subtracting off the intersection gives you a final probability of 16 out of 52. Now that we've defined some of the more advanced probability rules, we can finally define a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a visualization of probabilities for two or more events, and this diagram shows all possible combinations of the events. So what you see down at the bottom is the simplest case of a Venn diagram. It has two different events with an overlap in the center. The rectangle down here is the sample space. So everything inside of the rectangle consists of the sample space. The probability inside the rectangle is equal to 1. So the sum of all of the individual probabilities inside the rectangle has to add up to 1. Over on the left, we have event A. Everything inside the circle on the left, both the crescent shape and the overlap with the other circle, consists of the marginal probability of event A. We have the same thing for event B. Event B is the right circle, and the marginal probability for event B includes both the crescent shape for event B as well as its overlap with event A. Where the two circles overlap is your intersection, so that would be the probability of A and B. And anything that lies inside of the rectangle but outside both of the circles means that neither A nor event B has occurred. Let's take a look at how we can set up a Venn diagram based on a given scenario. According to a recent survey of business students, 35% of people took an accounting class, 50% took a finance class, and 25% took neither. The goal here is to create a Venn diagram of the results. Here's what we know so far. The probability that a student took an accounting class, we'll denote that by the probability of A, is equal to 0.35. The probability that a student took a finance class, which we'll denote by P of F, is equal to 0.5. These are both marginal probabilities, so the sum inside of the accounting circle has to be equal to 0.35, and the sum inside of the finance circle has to be equal to 1 half. We also know that the probability that a student didn't take either of these classes, they did not take an accounting class, and they did not take a finance class, that probability is equal to 0.25. Our next step is to find the intersection and the individual probabilities of each event. The first thing that we can do with this Venn diagram is actually fill in the probability that's outside both circles. We know that the probability that a student didn't take either an accounting or a finance class is equal to 0.25, so this 0.25 goes outside both circles, but still inside of the sample space. Now since all of our probabilities have to add to 1, 
we get the following relationship. We can figure out the union of the two events. We can figure out the probability that a student took either an accounting class or a finance class or both because the union of these two events is everything inside one of the circles, either the crescent shape for accounting, the crescent shape for finance, or the intersection between the two of them. We already have 0.25 of the probability accounted for outside of the circles, so what this means is that the union of these two events is equal to 1 minus the probability that a student didn't take either an accounting class or a finance class. We know the probability they didn't take either one is 0.25, so the probability of the union is 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75. Another way to think about this is that the total probability inside both circles has to equal 0.75. Now using the general addition rule, we can calculate the intersection next. The probability that a student took either an accounting class or a finance class is the marginal probability that a student took an accounting class plus the marginal probability that a student took a finance class minus the probability of the intersection. We know that the union is 0.75, that's what we solved for up above. Based on the given information from the problem, the probability that a student took an accounting class is 0.35 probability they took a finance class is 0.5. So the only unknown that we have in here is the probability of the intersection. Solving this equation for the probability of the intersection tells us that the probability that a student took both an accounting class and a finance class is equal to 0.1. At this point, we have two of the four sections of the Venn diagram filled in. We have the intersection, and we have the section that doesn't include either event. Here's what we know. We know that the probability that a student took an accounting class is 0.35, and the probability that a student took a finance class is 0.5. These are both marginal probabilities. Marginal probabilities in a Venn diagram include the entire circle. What this means is that it includes the crescent-shaped part as well as the intersection. To finish off the Venn diagram, we need to fill in the crescent-shaped parts. And these crescent parts of the Venn diagram include only the students who took accounting but didn't take finance over on the left. On the right, we have the students who only took a finance class and did not take an accounting class. The way we're going to be able to do this is to realize that everything inside of the blue circle is the marginal probability for taking an accounting class, and everything inside of the red circle is the marginal probability for taking a finance class. The probability that a student only took an accounting class is going to be the marginal probability of taking an accounting class minus the probability of the intersection. The marginal probability of taking an accounting class is 0.35, and the probability of the intersection is 0.1. Taking this difference, we get 0.25. What this tells us is that the probability that a student took an accounting class and did not take a finance class is equal to 0.25. We can do the same thing for finance. The probability that a student only took a finance class is going to be equal to the marginal probability of taking a finance class minus the joint probability probability of the intersection of taking both an accounting class and a finance class. This is 0.5, the marginal probability, minus the intersection, which is 0.1, giving us a final probability of 0.4. So we can finish off the Venn diagram by filling in the 0.4. 40% of the students took a finance class and did not take an accounting class.